All right, this is block three, section four, Teddy Roosevelt Progressive, and the term beginning with trust buster. We remember what trusts are um, from earlier in the block. They are, um, a trust is a group of companies or company that, com that controls a monopoly in a particular business. Teddy Roosevelt Progressive comes to power promising to break up these large corporations, which would be a unprecedented move by an American politician to interfere that actively uh, in the marketplace. But Teddy Roosevelt was nicknamed the Trust Buster uh, because he sought to break up these large companies through the vigorous enforcement, the strong enforcement of various antitrust laws. There were some antitrust laws on the book, books, like the Sherman Antitrust Act, but none of them were particularly enforced or powerful. But Teddy Roosevelt became president with a mind to break up these big trusts by enforcing these rules. And the first test of Roosevelt's trust busting came in what was known as the Northern Securities Company case. Now, if you remember from our Block 1 discussions of the Sherman Antitrust Act, it had been weakened by Supreme Court cases in the 1890s. But Roosevelt saw the Northern Securities Company, which was a railroad and banking company um, that controlled lots of the, the railroad and banking industry in the Northeast. And Roosevelt said, this is a ripe target. This is a perfect chance to prove that I am going to step forward for the people, bust this trust, take down this company that, in his view, uh, was taking advantage of the American people. And he ordered the government to sue the Northern Securities Company uh, for violation of the Antitrust Act. It was a long legal battle. Um, the Northern Security Company took Roosevelt to court, uh, and they welcomed this fight. They thought they would win. Um, Roosevelt picked the Northern Securities Company for a good reason. It was obviously a monopoly. Uh, it had a monopoly over a large geographic area. Roosevelt said if there's one company that, you know, is not going to get any good press, that is clearly a monopoly, it's this Northern Securities Company. Uh, the fight went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court kind of understanding that the American public had changed. This was not the same public as back in 1870 that would have rejected... Um, a diminution of laissez-faire. The American public by 1902, which is when this happened, the American public uh, in 1902 was because of all those progressive reformers, because of the progressive journalists, and because of all the newspapers and books, the American public was ready for a different role for the federal government, uh, a role in regulating these businesses. And the Supreme Court, kind of following along with a little bit of American public opinion, ordered uh, the Northern Securities Company to dissolve uh, and break up into smaller component parts. This was a huge victory uh, for Teddy Roosevelt. He followed it up shortly by pushing the Elkins Act through Congress. The Elkins Act took earlier antitrust legislation and made it stronger. This outlawed railroads from giving preferential prices to particular companies. All right, so it also um, further outlawed rebates. What the railroads had started to do was get around laws about rebates by simply buying... So let's say, for example, that there was a company that made shoes and a railroad company that would transport the shoes. In order to get around the rebate laws that were passed earlier, what the railroad company would do was buy the shoes before they were put on the trains. Then, the shoes that they were shipping were technically their shoes, and they wouldn't charge anybody anything for it. The shoes would travel for free on the trains. Of course they would travel for free because they were the railroad company's shoes. They had gotten around the laws about rebates by buying the shoes from the companies for a preferential price before they were ever shipped. The Elkins Act outlawed that. Um, it's another way that the government is interfering with business to the benefit of the small farmer, the small merchant, the small business owner. Okay. Roosevelt was not done. He then instituted what was known as the Hepburn Act. This was an even greater example of federal control over the economy. 
the 1906 Hepburn Act, what it did, it provided stricter for control for the railroads, including for the first time in American history, the government could tell a company how much it could charge for its services. That the railroads had a maximum rate. The, re the, the government said, you the railroad can only charge people this much and no more for your services. It was a greater intervention into the economy than had ever been thought of before. But Roosevelt, kind of on a roll uh, from the Northern Securities case and due to the Elkins Act, got the Hepburn Act passed. It was the first example of price controls uh, in American history, that railroads could only charge so much and not a penny more. Roosevelt's lassoing, if you will, and if you look at the cartoon, here he is, swinging his big stick, knocking over um, big coal, big oil, um, all of these different large corporate groups. Roosevelt was on a roll. Roosevelt got, and he kind of lassoed the railroads, uh, which was kind of the original enemy, the original target of many progressives. The railroads were no longer this giant monopolistic group that was taking advantage of farmers and small businessmen. Now the government, through intervention, um, kind of took that problem uh, away.